Hello, and welcome to the Package Manager's Weekly Sync. Uh, we haven't done one of these in a while because we've been reorganizing things. And so this seemed like a, a good time to discuss what we should do with this meeting uh, and the kind of areas we should focus on or the, the format of it that we should have on an uh, ongoing basis. I still think it's a good idea to have a um, a public call that is recorded and kind of gives a nice output of what we're working on, re IPFS and package managers. Um, but uh, maybe this would be a good week to discuss the different options, what we think is would be useful uh, to output for the community and what we should do going forward. Um, and just look at dogs being cuddled on the sofa. Oh, I don't know where. Oh, my dog's gone. Um, do we have any other place right now for this group where people are going to do kind of like weekly? This is this is what I've worked on this week. This is what I'm working on next week, and like write it down. I just had that meeting um, before, but it wasn't recorded or public. It was just like, let's review our Zen Hub um, and kind of see if anyone is blocked on anything. The output of that isn't like, isn't obvious entirely, I guess. It is, it's mostly just like aligned with the issues that are in the in progress column. And if you're not gonna be progressing on those, I guess they go into the backlog. Michelle's nodding, so that's that's correct. Like also, right. this is the first one of those we've had, so I imagine they will get more structured or turn Snappy. into whatever we think is most useful as we go along and grow as a team, that kind of thing. But uh, yep. Yeah. So we have sprint planning, quote unquote, right before this call. So to explain, I guess, a little bit of what has happened, uh, we had. And, oh no, your internet uh, and for a sec. I'm going to try and explain in between massive packet loss. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I thing is, you don't know until it starts. Uh, so I'll just repeat everything. I'll just repeat everything multiple times, and then eventually it'll come back. Um, the we had uh, IPFS Team Week and IPFS Camp uh, last month, or at least it was in June. Um, and kind of did a slight reorganization of the teams and the working groups within the IPFS project to, um, to focus on a number of key areas that we want to make real progress in. And one of those is the package managers uh, support um, of package managers with IPFS. And so, rather than just be a special interest group doing research, we actually now have uh, a real team uh, that are focused on improving different parts of IPFS that are directly related to package management. And for this next quarter, we've put together the OKRs um, and they are linked and in the new updated readme of the package managers repository on GitHub. Uh, we are going to focus on the file system based package managers, primarily Linux um, system distro package managers, but that can also work for Maven, CPAN, basically any package manager that you can make a mirror or backup with rsync and be able to drop it in uh, a directory, essentially. Like, so that uh, that kind Why of Why did we choose to focus on that? Why? Why did we choose to focus on that? Uh, because it is kind of the, of again, in the package managers repo, there's a nice file about the kind of different levels of implementation as you go down. Um, and the file system based package managers are the simplest in terms of getting the whole thing onto IPFS because everything is file based. The indexes, uh, as well as the individual tables are all nicely contained in simple files, which I think is 
uh, I haven't actually spoken to many file system based package manager maintainers, but it comes across as uh, it's set up for operational simplicity, for the ability to easily allow uh, copying and mirroring using traditional Linux tooling without needing to uh, to build extra databases or to run applications. You're literally able to use uh, HTTP servers and rsync and FTP servers to enable many people to run their own mirrors of package managers. And then everything is signed as well. Like that's a really nice thing not to have to worry about uh, is that all of that signing is contained as files with inside that package manager. So we can get full support for a file system based package manager simply by being able to put that directory into IPFS and then be able to have people download um, via the path uh, using Unix FS. And then uh, every time that there's an update to that package manager, the root hash of that directory will change and we'll need to broadcast that out either via IPNS or via updating a DNS link. But that kind of gives us a nice small target to focus on and we can then uh, be able to make a big impact there. That also, all the improvements we make for, for file system based package managers contribute towards other kinds of package managers as well. But each other kind, uh, so that's the database backed or the Git based package managers uh, have more complexity because trying to put a database inside of IPFS or to try and make something that acts like a database inside of IPFS uh, becomes tricky when it comes to permissions and uh, authority Sorry. over naming. Oh, Dirk, did you have a question? Sorry, no. Um, whereas in the file system based package managers, you have a central source of truth, which is usually whoever has the admin rights to say the deb repository, uh, they can write to any part of the Debian repository and they're kind of trusted to do that. Whereas many database based package managers, you're looking at like, well, I can change these rows of this database and I can change these tables or I can add more tables um, that are referenced from rows in the database. That ends up being really complicated when you try and put all of that on a, onto IPFS. But for those database package managers, actually storing the tarballs ends up being a subset of the, uh, the file system based package managers. So that's kind of where we shook out and said like, this seems like a good one to start with. And then once we've done that successfully, then we can move on to looking at how to, uh, how to support the other kinds of package managers once we've got file system based ones working well. Does that cover off why we came out with that Thank pretty you. well? I appreciate uh, and then like inside of that, we kind of have a few things that we already know from the past uh, few months of the package manager special interest group of the kinds of challenges that are involved in just getting file system based package managers on to IPFS, the performance of importing, the performance of updating, and then the challenges of updating as well with different APIs and the user experience of doing that from a maintainer side. And then on the flip side is the, the consumer has a performance and UX uh, challenges as well. We've kind of formed our OKRs around that a little bit, but I think to begin with, we're focusing mostly on the maintainer side. So setting up mirrors and then being able to regularly update those mirrors. They're fairly large looking things. So the stats for like the uh, apt repository is almost a million files across some 50,000 directories uh, inside of a single root directory. They get updated maybe every, I think the, 
the average is somewhere between like the suggested sync is every four to six hours. If you end up being a primary, so that a lot of the mirror setups appear to be like primary and secondary. Secondary ones, they're like, oh, try and uh, try and update every every day, every twenty four hours. Some of them are like, oh, you can uh, you can sync every ten minutes if you're using this particular kind of um, rsync script. But to be a primary, you usually the mirror the the upstream source will push to your server and say over SSH and say like, oh, there's a new thing you should run in rsync. That ends up being like fairly small differences uh, and they're not as frequent as say like NPM, which is seeing a new release of a package every few seconds. Uh, we're seeing like maybe every four hours, which is convenient because currently it takes about four hours to uh, to commit the differences and to go through and rehash every file and check if it's changed or not uh, via using a straight up IPFS add to add the whole thing again. Um, Dominic has been working on some interesting efforts around being able to mount IPFS as a file system, which would enable us to rsync directly into IPFS which would be really cool because then we wouldn't only need to uh, to rehash the stuff that has changed. And that would work directly with existing tooling that package manager maintainers use rather than having to create and maintain particular tools for uh, package management. If we can work with existing uh, Unix tooling, then that's wonderful. It means we can kind of lean on all of that existing well-known tech rather than having to become maintainers. Yes, Molly. I was taking a look at the Q3 OKRs for this group. Um, and I, I noticed that the, the, the number zero OKR, which is file system based package managers should be able to take a large directory of files and import it into IPFS from scratch in an amount of time that's reasonable and then update it. Um, it doesn't have any either initiatives or, or metrics around it, um, presumably because the that. next one after that has like defined the metrics that are relevant or something. Um, oh, but for that. example, the thing you just described sounds like an initiative, which is like not tracked anywhere in your OKRs. Sorry, I missed the first part of that, but Michelle definitely heard it if you want to take it. Uh, can you hear me first of all? Yeah. Uh, that zero bit isn't really an OKR. I didn't know where to put it. It was more that once we started breaking stuff down, that was like the North Star kind of thing. And then the stuff underneath it was like, okay, this is how we're going to solve that shrug, if that makes sense. Okay, then my alternate feedback loop is um, effectively you have, you have three OKRs. Um, one around, hey, we should, we should measure some stuff. Measuring is important, and I'm very supportive of that. That's great. One that is like research some stuff, we should understand some things, and one that is we should, be, we should be happy and we should be functioning as a team. All of those are great things. None of those is actually make the package manager experience great using IPFS. Like none of those is actually the end work of so doing that. Number, so. yeah. number two is research and improve the user experience. So it's not just research. Uh, we. Oh, sorry, not sorry. It just says we research and test. Technically, Does it? it doesn't. It doesn't say like research and like, and like improve. It's Line just research 15, and test. Research and improve user experience. Right here. Uh, yeah, but I'm looking at the key results underneath it, or the initiatives. So. We have. So in order to make research and improve a thing, the initiatives are the things we do to do that. We can definitely. We, I mean, we can um, change the word. It's change uh, the wording. Um, yeah. We're imagining that the second lump there is both work out how we, what kind of the the pain points are where user experience includes the speed, um, and then actually like be able to improve the speed. But we're currently not exactly sure which way we should improve it. 
other than the end result should be faster and people should have a good time. I can also say for me, it was a bit of like, well, we're in an interesting space where I know we talked at team week. Um, it's like, okay, we're might be doing a lot of tests in shipyard, for example, and be able to say we've done all this and we've done like 10 POCs and we think that this is the way to do it but we're not confident that we actually can get anything into like the core implementations because that's not us, it kind of is us. Anyways, so for me, test is a bit like POC and we're going to be doing this stuff and we're going to figure out how to do things probably, but yeah. Um, for me, that's me personally. I don't know if uh, Andrew feels the same way. Gotcha. So my understanding from the conversations from Team Week and from past conversations in this group is that like core protocol improvements are needed in order to achieve these things that Andrew was just describing. Um, and that we do have kind of a, a more targeted understanding of, of like the next thing we think needs to happen, whether that's a, a capability that we think needs to be added um, or whether that's like a performance improvement to a specific area. Um, and yet from reading these initiatives, like they, they don't seem, at, which is, you know, if, if these are like super high level and these point to like four issues, which is like do this thing and this thing and this thing, um, that's cool. But then I think it needs really precise metrics for how we're gonna measure this um, of like, hey, we're gonna take like these, this P three POCs, all of which already exist um, and like make them faster or make them, reduce this really annoying point or something like that because yeah, right now I just feel like to, it's gonna be really hard for you to measure any of these things. Yeah well we hope to get there. The whole point is that we don't actually know what improvement means yet and that's part of what our job is this quarter. We don't know if it means that it, XYZ needs to be faster or ABC needs to be faster. We don't know if faster is even the thing that we should be focusing on or if it's something else up there like that the ad API is doing something weird blah blah blah, blah. and it's a user experience problem mostly. So as soon as we have that stuff, we will certainly add it in. Um, yeah. So I think the the work that I kind of lined up to focus on this week was to generate a document that lines up uh, like as the the kind of this section. Sorry, terrible internet. Um, so basically going like, here's the, like, the summary of everything file system based for, from the past three months, including all of the like, known blockers and the existing metrics that were collected. Group them out into areas which would be research of like, what's the, like, here are the things that have been experienced and then like do they how would they go about being fixed do they even should they even be considered or should they just be thrown out as like that is not the right way to use ipfs for this thing then the metrics that we already have so like 36 hours to do ipfs add from scratch for the apt repository results as one of those like his this is the own, currently the only way you can do this, uh, like without DDoSing the DHT. Uh, that basically, that document will be the precursor to those four things. One of them, like it, the output, uh, the, the conclusion of that document basically is going to be like, one way would be to mount IPFS uh, as a file system and sync directly into that. Another way, would be uh, to look at kind of the the current multiple options for adding files via the CLI and how each one doesn't work for like some particularly annoying thing. And then the performance broadly, I said IPFS add, but really there's like IPFS files write uh, or the other things um, will be like that's the the lump of the work for once we've gone like well we're definitely not going to be able to use this api or like we don't think it's worth investing in that uh but i think that the conclusion will line up um with the um the things that we've got there 
And then being able to actually talk to package manager maintainers will inform this. I'm imagining we will be doing a lot of course correction once we have people with the knowledge of IPFS internals more kind of onboarded into the things that we've got. We've kind of generated these OKRs from the point of research rather than the point of like knowledge of internals or what we think we could actually ship and trying to be quite iterative in the way that we go about solving it rather than trying to speculate too far ahead because that's, I find, changing the direction on a regular basis uh, to be an effective way to like thinking about the end user uh, the whole time will be something that will be front of mind um, and which is why we kind of put the key result as maintainers should uh, kind of be like successful and that there should be like, if we do it right, people will start to mirror stuff and we'll be able to like track that. But maybe putting a key metric that says there are X number of mirrors is kind of putting the wagon in front of the horse. Yeah, I hear you. And I think um, the, the sort of, the sort of thing that I would hope would be demonstrated by the work that we do this quarter by having these POCs that already point out some like real pain points where we're like, oh, maybe people don't want to be running these POCs all the time because they have some, some pretty annoying characteristics to them. Um, getting to a point where even the existing POCs we have are, you know, running in a reasonable amount of time with a reasonable amount of overhead, like we we feel good pointing people to these things as like the exemplars that they should emulate things like that um just the data point is like um getting to a place where you can actually measure this key result for this area is like it i completely agree like that's what we should be aiming for i, I don't think we should be pivoting somewhere else i just think that's hard to measure um and so looking at other um data points you can use and what you already have that you're using to drive the work uh, and feeding that into your OKRs could be really useful. Otherwise, you have to create some sort of polling mechanism for all package manager repository maintainers and ask them these questions and get them to respond and to get them to have a delta before and after. Um, and like, we're not going to do that because that's overhead and we have engineering work to do, which is what we're going to focus on. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I see where I see where you're coming from there. I will ponder on that a bit. Um how we can do that. I, I kind of imagined me being a proxy of the maintainers as well. I'm not sure if that's necessarily a good idea, but definitely kind of being like, Oh, I can try and set up a mirror uh again and again and kind of repeatedly say, I didn't have a good time. It was slightly better than last time, but it's still not good. Uh, than that, like I can set up a, a mirror within a reasonable window of time as, as someone who has set up mirrors before, maybe you have an idea of like how long that should really take. And then consuming from that mirror is like something that, you know, is just as nice as consuming from other mirror, mirrors that I have running. Don't we have and, one minute? Okay. So, um, that's really good feedback, Molly. I think, uh, we should definitely take that into account and think about how to get the measurement under control a little bit more rather than having something a little bit looser. Um, and it seemed what I'll do for the next week's um, weekly call for package managers will be to come up maybe with a, uh, a theme. I'll probably open an issue or I'll put it in the, um, the issue that we have for this weekly sync. Uh, if anyone else wants to propose a, a topic for a week, then maybe throw in that issue as well, and we can um, we can kind of iterate on how we do these meetings uh, on a weekly basis, um, and get kind of more of a community summary or like interesting um, areas of uh, kind of information in these meetings and we can uh, 
maybe like hopefully get our OKR kind of things into the um, the weekly review area that we have. Um, I think there's also an OKR meeting towards the end of the week that we can we can follow up. Hopefully, I'll have some improvements there for you. Now we have a just a presentation of our our OKRs across different groups on Thursday, which we're going to record and make make sure it's accessible. Cool. Wow. Thanks everyone for coming. I'll stick them in the issue. And uh, we'll see you next week.